go to NBC's Speed World. Floating in the ever-expanding universe, a galaxy spins along in its endless journey through time. At its edge, an obscure solar system races across the void of space. One planet alone bears the essence of life. Some call it Earth. We call it Speed World. Today, it's population, the denizens of the dirt, the world of outlaw sprint cars, and the flat track motorcycles at the Syracuse Mile. All today on NBC's Speed World. And it's brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Life. It doesn't get any better than this. By Monroe Shock Absorbers, makers of the Gasmatic, the most advanced shock Monroe has ever made. By Sears, where you'll find great values. There's more for your life at Sears. And by Honda Motorcycles. Honda, follow the leader. Not the normal venue for Speed World, but this lovely suburban home is located in Fort Worth, Texas, and belongs to Johnny Rutherford, his wife Betty and their two children. They've been here for 15 years. Very appropriate, because today we'll be at Mesquite, Texas, at the Devil's Bowl for the World of Outlaws. And it was at the old Devil's Bowl that Johnny Rutherford started his racing career. Now, one week ago at the Indianapolis Hall of Fame Museum, we saw a remarkable collection of racing memorabilia. Today, you'll see a remarkable trophy collection, unique because they all belong to one man, Johnny Rutherford. Let's go inside. Now, this is the trophy room at the Rutherford home. Now, the last time we were here was back in 1980 after he flipped upside down at Phoenix. We came here to make sure he was okay. It was a, a much smaller trophy room then. John, you've really expanded. Yes, and fortunately we had to, to make room for all of the trophies. This particular case we've stopped in front of here, Paul, is the one that means a little something to me. It has a lot of the memorabilia I've collected over the years. And, of course, as you can see, the three Indianapolis victories and the place for the fourth one there. Yeah, but what if you win five? You don't have any room. Hey, we'll just take this. Throw it over there, move these back, and we'll put that Hummer right there. There are some very special things here, like your rings. Yes, these rings, Paul, are the ones that I've won, of course, the two other Indianapolis uh, championships and the national championship for USAC and CART and the Triple Crown. So it's, uh, it's a lot of things that mean a great deal to me here. It's really a grand collection for a grand champion, but John, what about the early days? It's the very first trophy that I ever won racing a car, wow. Paul, in 1960 at a local Dallas-Fort Worth track. Now, John's first victory came at the old Devil's Bowl, not far from here at Mesquite, Texas. And now a whole breed of sprint car drivers are beginning to follow in, in his footsteps at the Devil's Bowl. Well, the outlaws are ready in the badlands of Texas, just to the east of Dallas in Mesquite. This is the main straightaway at Devil's Bowl. This is grassroots Americana racing. The sprint car is indigenous to the United States. It can trace its line all the way back to Barney Oldfield. The men that are really top in this sport are skilled artisans. Here's one of them right now, Sammy Swindell. The most wins on this track. Now, does that give you a benefit, Sammy? Well, I think so. You know, we, we've run here for quite a few years, and I've been quick here all the time, so we've got a pretty good spot here in the second row, so I think we'll be in real good shape. Track's not too hard and slick. You can win her. Well, it's a little hard. It's, uh, the only thing is going to be the lap traffic is going to give us a little problem, but uh, we'll be okay. That's one of the men that you definitely have to beat if you're racing in the world of outlaws. Another, the reigning world of outlaw champion, is Steve Kinzer. Now, Steve has had his problems with this track, but lately, Steve, it seems like it's going better for you. Well, our last uh, five times down here, we've uh, come off with about three wins, so... Uh, uh, we used to have a lot of problems with this, but uh, I think we're on today, and we're going to give it one hell of a try. The fact that you are the champion, does that give you a bit of an advantage? Well, uh, what gives me the advantage right at the present is uh, they got me on the front row, and uh, the, anytime you start on the front row uh, of a World of Outlaw race with all the competition the way it is, it uh, gives you a little bit of an uh, advantage, but uh, we just hope I don't get caught in no lap traffic and go smooth. We do wish you well today. Now, there's another unique combination here, one of uh, youth and experience. Here's Johnny Rutherford. Thank you, Paul. I'm here with Bobby Davis, Jr. from Memphis, Tennessee. And he reminds me a great deal of myself when I started this business 25 years ago. You know, with all of the different ways to get into racing and the different types of racing to do, why did you pick sprint cars? Well, it's 
start of all, my dad owned a lot of sprint cars, and I, I raced go-karts for a while. And we went racing with Sammy Swindell for a while, and uh, I just felt like going to sprint car racing. Well, you know, when I started this business, like I say, 25 years ago, uh, the aspirations were to go. I mean, the thought we had was to go to Indianapolis to race in the Big 500. What are your goals? Well, I'd like to go to Indy. Uh, I, I prefer the NASCARs, I believe, you know, for the safetyness. I believe that's where I'd like to go. You'd rather run NASCAR? I believe so. Just because you think they're a little safer. You like this cage around you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I like the cage. Well, you know, this type of racing has progressed a great deal since I started that many years ago. And, of course, with all of these safety features, the, the cage, it makes it safer. You've even got power steering today. And, of course, the tires are incredible. Uh, the tires on the front of your car are about as wide as what I used to have on the back of my car. Yeah, that, I remember you telling me that. And uh, they have got a lot wider uh, for more forward bite. And um, if we want side bite or so, we put a narrow tire on. And we mainly run the wide ones. How does the wing affect you? Uh, the wing makes the car a lot stabler, um, like it helps on the forward bite and on the side bite. And um, just like going down the straightaway, you know, you feel a lot more secure without, with one than you do without. I would think so. Well, of course, the cars are a lot safer today with the wings and with the roll cages. And, of course, they're a little bit faster than they were in my time, depending on track conditions. And with the track conditions, as Gary Gerald, we'll go to him to see what it's like out there. John, obviously the first thing that anyone notes about this unique half mile of Devil's Bowl is the fact that the back straightaway is significantly higher than the front straightaway. In fact, we're told it's about 15 feet different in elevation, meaning that when you go into turns one and two, you're driving uphill. When you come to turn three here and into four, you're coming downhill. Drivers say it doesn't greatly affect the handling characteristics, but you must be on your toes. When you come down into four, you can find yourself being sucked out toward the front straightaway crash wall. Of more concern today is the actual surface of this half mile. This is a black gumbo clay. Under normal nighttime racing conditions, it would hold its moisture. It would be sticky, tacky, heavy, as the drivers call it. But under daytime racing, with the wind and the sun, even though we've had some overcast today, it glazes over. It becomes very hard. It becomes abrasive. That makes tire wear critical. Every driver in the field will tell you, if you don't come up with the right tire combination for this racetrack today, you have absolutely no chance of being competitive and thus winning the race. So it's a real guessing game going on right now. They've got to come up with the right tire combination. many IRA plans. Call 800-THE-DEAN. Dean Witter. Worth asking about. Since 1837, the legendary high fences of Aintree have taken their toll, proving to be the ultimate test of man and horse. And Tex Koff takes you into the high-kicking world of championship karate. On NBC Sports World, there is a world of difference. There's the trademark of the world of outlaws as they group in their rows of four, tightly bunched. Nearly 700 horsepower in each of these engines as they come around to receive the salute from the fans the fans love to watch this formation. Then from here, they will move to their rows of two, ready for the start. The World of Outlaws on parade here at Devil's Bowl at Mesquite, Texas. Each of the drivers ready now, contemplating what they will do on the start. The start, so important. And they move to the rows of two now. So let's take a look at the lineup for this run at Devil's Bowl. On the front row, in number seven, the inside, Tim Green. Alongside the outside of the front row, number 11, Steve Kinzer, the World of Outlaw reigning champion. The second row, number 18, Bobby Davis Jr. on the inside, and number one, Sammy Swindell on the outside. The third row, 1A, Bobby Allen to the inside, 5W, Randy Wolf on the outside, the fourth row. 1N, Doug Wolfgang and 80, Jeff Swindell. The fifth row, 10N, Terry Gray and 81, Lee Osborne. The sixth row, Bill Bailey and Rick Burkle. The seventh row, Mike Peters, Norman Martin. The eighth row, Jimmy Sills and Gary Bell. The ninth row, Brad Doty and Greg Woolley. The tenth row, Ricky Allen and Randy Boldrini. The eleventh row, Mike Collier and Ronnie Schumann. And the last row, TJ Giddings and Steve Perry. 
The Outlaws are ready to run. There comes the front row, Tim Green and Steve Chinzer, as we're ready for a start here. Already, Beryl Christian has told them they'll come to a start this time. The pace picks up. The green flag flies. Chinzer throws it high. Tim Green jumps into the lead, and we are racing here at Devil Fall. Boy, it's amazing to watch the push down into this first turn. The cars are all feeling their way around, trying to keep from bumping into one another. Ronnie Schumann, 21X, from the back, begins to charge up through the pack. We had a car spin out. Car number 65 has spun onto the back stretch. So already the yellow flag flies a double full on this, the first lap, as number 65, Mike Peters, waits for the push truck to come alongside, and the front of the field will form up with Tim Green in front. Here is the start of the race as we look at it again. So important. Yes, it is, Paul. You know, this is the, the point where you can bump into somebody and get into serious trouble. So everyone is really squeezed up, looking for a spot, trying to make a move, but not do it too much because you might get in trouble. Tim Green got a wonderful shot there for the start, and Bobby Davis was able to follow him on through. But Bobby Davis Jr. gets a little anxious here, Paul, and runs into the back of Sammy Swindell. So a yellow flag right on the first lap with Tim Green out in front. There you see Swindell, and Bobby Davis comes right up behind him, just gently taps him. No problem with that. They're lined up once again. There's Tim Green on the inside. Steve Kins are on the outside as they take their formation, ready for a restart here at the Devil's Bowl. Problem on the first lap. The green flag out again, and we are back to racing. This time, Kinzer throws it way high. Green down low, and Green jumps into the lead again. Yes, Paul, but Steve Kenzer is in hot pursuit, and he has the car set up right behind him, so this will be one heck of a race. Kenzer getting a much better start this time. Back at the back of the field, 21X, Ronnie Schumann moving up through, as is number 75, Brad Doty, as they thread their way through this pack, trying to move toward the front. Most of the drivers, Paul, can see that if you aren't in the top three rows when this race started, you wouldn't be a factor. Doty and Schumann are going to try to prove them wrong. Here is Tim Green, still in pursuit is Kinzer. Kinzer tries it low as Green comes high. Last lap, Kinzer decided the high route was better. And coming up close and closing now in third place is Doug Wolfgang. Yes, and Steve Kinzer has gone into the lead now, Paul. He got a, got a real hold of something down there on the bottom of the racetrack. Just shot him past Tim Green. We're still watching Brad Doty and Ronnie Schumann as they spread their way up through that pack, really making progress now. Paul, when you have to start in the back like they did, it's doubly tough to have to move through the field, but it's very interesting for the fans to get to watch them. Back at the front once again, the yellow number 11 of Steve Kinzer leading Tim Green, that red machine, second place. And back there in the pack as we continue to watch those men try to charge, they have to gamble on the race setup to try to find a little advantage because they have so far to go. Kinzer, Green, Wolfgang, all up front setting a furious pace on this tight half-mile track. Number one, Swindell down low, but Bobby Davis at number 18 comes around, moves into fourth place, Swindell back to fifth. The leaders once again, here comes Davis through, and now in pursuit of Davis is number 63, Rick Burkle. There we have your leader, Kenzer. He's stretching out quite a lead now, so he must be pretty comfortable out there. Most of the drivers still uncertain which line to take, the high or the low line. Here is the battle for fifth place. Number one, Swindell, Rick Burkle, and number 63. As they fight their way around, using the high line, you saw a bit of smoke off Burkle's tire, indicating that it's wearing a little bit early. They're a big pitch, given by Steve Kinzer, still out in front. Yes, and he's still running that high line, Paul. He's right up against what we call the cushion, that bank of dirt that he can kind of lean the right rear against. So Kinzer now has managed to move about a straightaway lead over the second place car, the number seven machine of Tim Green. Yes, but Paul, back in second place, Wolfgang is moving in on Tim Green, and he's getting ready to try to take the second place now. But Tim Green slams the door on Wolfgang. Wolfgang hits the binders, pulls back, and waits as Green continues his run in second place. In third place is Wolfgang. We've got a car. Quick spin down in the first turn. 23W, Greg Woolley. And so the yellow flag is out. Now, what about these lines on the course? Where do they drive, and why do they choose it? Let's go down to Gary Gerald as he looks at the lines on the course. Interesting contrast in driving styles up front in this race. Steve Kinzer electing to use the high groove from the opening flag, very effective in the lead. Duck Wolfgang and the number one end car who's racing third in sharp contrast as his car tucked right down as low on the pole as he can possibly get. The question now becomes how much moisture is left for Kinzer before he has to leave the high groove and come down low. Can Wolfgang, taking the short way around, close the gap on him? 
So the field follows Steve Kinzer, Tim Green, and Doug Wolfgang back toward the green flag as we're ready to go racing once again. The track clear, the green flag flies, and Green and Kinzer get together. Kinzer just barely taps him. Wolfgang closes up, but still, they stay in contention. Wolfgang is down low, fighting with Kinzer for first. The low line is no good for Wolfgang. He is able to move to second now. He charges for the lead. Wolfgang roars into the lead. Kinzer is second, Green is third. What an incredible move by Doug Wolfgang as he leaps down that back straightaway, taking the lead away from Steve Kinzer, and he looks like he's really got it hooked up. But look at this tremendous battle for fourth through eighth, number 18, Bobby Davis in fourth. Here comes Swindell as he charges on Burkle. They are fighting for fifth place and sitting back watching but continuing in the action, Brad Doty and Bobby Allen. Sammy Swindell in that one car has been up and down. He's trying to run down low, just as Wolfgang was doing. He gains two positions, then he loses them back. You see the horsepower on the straightaway that puts him into contention, but the car just not set up or handling the way he hoped it would when they set it up to run low. Bobby Allen slides by now as he gets past Swindell. Swindell is really having problems. His car is just not getting a hold of the racetrack, Gary, and he's scratching all around looking for a place to run, not having much luck. Allen tucks in behind Swindell. We're back at the front now as Kenzer comes low with a challenge on Wolfgang for the lead. Tim Green still running in third. Kenzer is back out in front. Wolfgang is back in second. Kenzer's car really operates around the outside of this racetrack. He used it to his advantage, has taken the lead back, and he's gone away again. Again, the variance in lines as Kenzer uses just a little bit of the cushion on the high side, and Wolfgang comes down and uses the low side. The battle for fifth continues as Doty, number 75, slides past Swindell on the high side. There goes Rick Burkle as well, the low side, not working nearly as well for Swindell, but on a straightaway, he comes back past Burkle. Swindell's car really gets forward by it, and he just leaps down the straightaway once he gets lined up. Boy, he's got his problems in the turns. Remember, too, that Doty, now running in fifth place, started this race back in the ninth row, so a magnificent charge for him. Now, Bobby Allen pours on the power, screams past Burkle, and Swindell moves down on the inside. Yes, Paul, and it appears that the racetrack is changing, and the bottom line around turns three and four seems to be the best. So Bobby Allen in 1A, now in sixth place. The battle is for seventh place between Swindell and Burkle. But these drivers continue to experiment, trying to find where on the race course they have bite. The battle for the lead once again as Doug Wolfgang closes down on Steve Kinzer, but the yellow flag comes out. Another spin by Greg Woolley, number 23W, so the field will slow. Gary Gerald has been watching from inside the second turn. Gary? Well, while those two great veterans, Wolfgang and Kinzer, continue their battle up front, we've been watching the back of the pack. And the man we're keeping a close eye on is Brad Doty and Gary Stanton's number 75 car. This Arizona-based car has really made a run. He came from the ninth row, started 17th. They may have put on soft rubber. It's really paid off as we get set to go green again. Steve Kinzer leads the pack around. Doug Wolfgang right down low. He's being chased by Tim Green. That's first, second, and third. Kinzer, Wolfgang, Green. But look at Kinzer pull out again. There goes Doty around the outside, trying to get by Bobby Davis Jr. Here comes Bobby Allen on the inside, and they have moved him back two spots. Doty and Allen pull a high-speed straddle on Bobby Davis as they pick up fourth and fifth. Davis drops back to sixth place. Doty's still trying to work that outside and get around Bobby Allen, and he does. Back at the front, it's Kinzer still in front. He continues to use the high groove. Doug Wolfgang comes down low, continues to knock on his door, Tim Green still maintains third place. The battle is for fourth, and it is a hot battle at that, but here comes Wolfgang back up at the front as he challenges on Kinzer, but then falls back. Yes, Paul, he moved up on that top line. Here's Kinzer now, moving down to the bottom, shutting the door. Here's the battle for fourth place. Up high, it's Doty. Down low, it's Bobby Allen. Allen currently in fourth place as Doty drops back just a bit. And you can't help but wonder if Doty may have used up the effectiveness of the tires. He's still there trying to make the run as he battles almost wheel to wheel with Bobby Allen. Back at the front of the field, Wolfgang tries it again, closes down behind Kinzer. Kinzer lifts up that left front wheel as he spins the tires and heads off into the first turn. Now on the back stretch, Kinzer lights that right rear a little bit as he pulls away from Wolfgang. You know, Kenzer is moving up and down. He goes around the outside one lap, and then he moves down around the bottom one lap. He's really searching, trying to find out when that corner's going to give up. 
Recall back in the 70s, Doug Wolfgang set an all-time record of victories in a single season for sprint car drivers with 45. Steve Kinzer equaled that record with 45 wins a year ago, the two of them battling for supremacy here at the Devil's Bowl. Kinzer and Wolfgang now begin to close on the back of the field, the first time they've encountered lap traffic. Now they must thread their way through. Both of these drivers are masters at handling traffic, though. It's very tight on this half mile at Devil's Bowl. That's the hard part. This is the real test. Oh, we have two cars getting together, bumping there. But you can see Kenzer still moving around the outside. This is the test, as I've said, when you run into the back. This is Paul Page with Johnny Rutherford and Gary Gerald at the Devil's Bowl, where we are under the yellow flag. Steve Kinzer currently leads, followed by Doug Wolfgang and Tim Green. Out in the second turn, Gary Gerald has been watching some moves from the back. Well, that slick racing surface starts to take its toll once again. We're seeing more spin-outs. The man on the move is Brad Doty. A year ago here at Devil's Bowl, he came from far back in the back to win a World of Outlaw race. He started 17th today. He's currently in the fourth spot in Gary Stanton's number 75. So he has really come the farthest of any driver in the field thus far. The green flag in the hands of the starter once again as they wind up the rest, and Kinzer leads them down toward the green flag. Look at this terrific fight now as Doty comes up, challenging for fourth place, challenging for third, comes around Tim Green. Can he hold on? Bobby Allen on the inside, moves into third, Doty into fourth, and Green gets pushed back into fifth. Bobby Allen is one of the best drivers when it comes to the hard slick racetrack, and he's no spring chicken. He's 40 years old, so he's out there standing on a gas. We're back with the lead. Steve Kinzer, that yellow machine being chased by the white car of Doug Wolfgang. Kinzer has decided the high side is the best in the third and fourth turn. Wolfgang still down low, and Bobby Allen closing on Wolfgang. Steve Kinzer and Doug Wolfgang are still out front and going for it. You know, I think with the overcast today, the racetrack has stayed a little better than the tire wear is not what they thought it would be. Here comes Kinzer and Wolfgang. Bobby Allen now up into third place. And Kinzer and Wolfgang both try the low side of the third and fourth turn. But here comes Kinzer up on the high side. A car spins. It's Jimmy Sills. 71 and the yellow flag is out once again. While they get Sills off of the racetrack, it is still Kinzer in the lead. Wolfgang second. Allen is now third as a result of that burst as he moves up in the field. So they get Sills going now. And as Kinzer brings the field around, there is little question that he has a decided advantage here on this track. What could that advantage be? Well, Gary Gerald has one possibility. It's a new development on the Kinzer car. Here's Gary. Steve Kinzer, of course, is a four-time World of Outlaw champion, but in an effort to make sure that success continues to come his way, Carl Kinzer, who prepares his race car, has come up with a new wrinkle to increase the effectiveness for Steve here in the cockpit. It relates to the large overhead wing that you're now familiar with. They've been on these cars for years. He has devised a system that can I'll enable Steve to actually move this wing as much as a foot forward or backward during the course of a race. It's tied to a hydraulic line that comes down. It's activated off the power steering unit. Here in the cockpit, Steve, by virtually pushing this lever forward or moving it back, can change the position of the wing. And this drastically can change the handling characteristics of the race car. So that as track conditions change and as the fuel load lessens, he can move this wing back, get more downforce on the rear of the car, and quickly accelerate off the corners. It's just a little edge that they're looking for to ensure the fact that he can continue to be a winner. Now, because it's very loud to activate it, we're going to ask Steve now to fire up the engine. He'll have an opportunity to see just how much this wing can travel. Remember, he can do this during the course of a race on a very tight, very fast half-mile track. Well, since he's running in the lead, it appears that it's working. You can bet it'll be about three days before there are four or five of those wings on other cars. Steve Kinzer leads them back to the green flag. Doug Wolfgang up high continues into pursuit, and Green is battling now for third place. Brad Doty seems to fall backwards now as he leaves that battle. Yes, Paul, I think his tires might have gone off a little bit. Of course, Bobby Davis Jr. is still hanging in there, making his move. Here is the lead once again as Bobby Allen tries it on the low side, closes on Wolfgang, but Wolfgang and Kinzer are running a race of their own. Here's the battle for fifth place. There's Davis. Swindell charges in. Doty on the high side. Swindell up and over on the berm a bit. Davis continues to hold fifth. That's Swindell right behind him as they chase Green down the straightaway. 
Paul Swindell's car. It's a rocket ship down the straightaway, but he's really got his hands full around the corners. So Davis has fifth place. That's Swindell challenging. Swindell continues to use the low side. Watching first, second, third, and fourth come through the line. Kinzer still out in front. It is still Wolfgang in pursuit. Kinzer is able to go wherever he wants to. He can run high or low, so I think he's got this thing pretty well figured out. Here's that continuing battle for fifth place. Bobby Davis now leading Swindell. Davis in the low groove, coming in the third and fourth turn. Swindell has been using the low groove all around. Back to the front, there's Kinzer. Still up high, still throwing the car all over the race course. Showing us why he has won four World of Outlaw Championships in their six-year existence. The defending champion, the all-time winner in the World of Outlaw ranks, doggedly being pursued by Doug Wolfgang, a pair of veterans that Kinzer has things in command on this half mile outside of Dallas, Texas. Back behind the leaders, here's third, fourth, and fifth as Tim Green tries to move up, close in and collect second place, but Bobby Davis is closing in on Green at the same time. Yes, they're closing up. Everybody's having to move down to the bottom of the racetrack in turn three and four, so it kind of evens things up a little bit, Paul. Back at the front, there's Steve Kinzer, number 11, that movable wing working for him. He's down low once again. Doug Wolfgang following him through. They are well out in front of the third place machine. Here's that battle for third place. It's Allen, Green, and Davis as they've closed in and are fighting for third. Yes, we hear, see Tim Green around the outside passing Bobby Allen, but watch him get a hold of the racetrack and go back by down the straightaway. It's incredible to watch these cars leap off of the corner. Green and Allen in a drag race as Steve Kinzer sees the white flag with one more lap to go. Closing on slower traffic once again as he pitches himself back and forth on the backstretch now. Wolfgang in pursuit. The lead belongs to Kinzer. Can Wolfgang close the last turn, the last straightaway? There's the checkered flag. Kinzer wins it. Now watch the battle for third place. There comes Allen and Green and Davis side by side. A photo finish for those two. So Steve Kinzer followed by Doug Wolfgang and then a very tight battle, third, fourth, and fifth between Bobby Allen, Tim Green, and Bobby Davis. But Steve Kinzer in number 11 wins this race. Now here comes Allen. That is Davis down on the inside. Green on the outside. It's the battle for fourth. And Tim Green has the acceleration and gets him at the line. Gary? Steve, congratulations once again. You got out in front early. What was the key in winning this race? Well, uh, I don't know. I could work on the top pretty good in one and two. I uh, never did try the bottom there. But in three and four, I had sort of a pitch up. I didn't know whether to run the bottom or the top. And uh, I, did, you know, I couldn't tell. And I'd, I just I was working pretty decent either place. Doug Wolfgang made a real strong run at you, jumped out in front there briefly. Any concerns at that point? Because he had been running down low. Well, what happened was I didn't get a real good start on a, on a restart, and he jumped by me on a restart, and then I had to get back by him. Uh, it was a mistake on my part. Uh, I took off on the bottom and hadn't been down there all day and uh, didn't just really know what to expect and uh, almost cost me the race. Carl fixed you this trick wing setup that we talked about a bit earlier. Did you use it at all today, move the wing back and forth? Uh, well, uh, I, I played with it a little bit. Uh, I don't know, it's still, uh, it's still just sort of an experimental stage right now. At this point, you're back in victory lane. You're starting off this 84 campaign just the way you ended up last year with another championship. Congratulations right. again. Thank you. A good run by Steve Kinzer, his third win on Devil's Bowl. John? Well, Paul, you know, this is the first sprint car race I've seen in a number of years, and they're just as exciting now as they ever were. Great racing today, the world of outlaws sprint cars. Well, the order of finish is official now. Kinzer wins it, Doug Wolfgang in second, Bobby Allen third, and after that tremendous fight and a photo finish, Tim Green in fourth, Bobby Davis in fifth. Well, they give big trophies to the big guys in the world of outlaws. John, that's a pretty unusual trophy. Yes, it is, Paul. This was made by the late Dale Mueller, and it's, and it's unique in that it's all wood, and it was the one presented to me by a race fan club back in 1965 for the National Sprint Car Championship. A little picture of our guy, J.R., in his car, and... Uh, Crew cuts in those days, yes, right? Yes, that, that was the thing. We went faster that way. <laughs> they go pretty fast in the world of outlaws today and some, some nice close racing. Yes, Paul, you know, 